Brain Death, a case-based discussion, produced by Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine students. Mr. Gomez is in the intensive care unit after he had a protracted cardiac arrest three days ago. He has not regained consciousness and his primary team has consulted you, the on-call neurologist, with concern for brain death. Brain death is defined as the irreversible cessation of all brain functions. It is the legal equivalent to death by cardiopulmonary criteria. The Uniform Determination of Death Act, which was written in 1981, states, an individual who has sustained either one, irreversible cessation of circulatory and respiratory functions, or two, irreversible cessation of all functions of the entire brain, including the brainstem, is dead. A determination of death must be made in accordance with accepted medical standards. How will you evaluate Mr. Gomez? In 2010, the American Academy of Neurology published guidelines on clinical determination of brain death in adults. The guidelines for the determination of brain death provide information on the prerequisites, clinical exam, apnea testing, and ancillary testing. Prerequisites that must be met before performing a brain death examination include identifying a known etiology for irreversible loss of function of the entire brain, ruling out reversible causes of coma, including the effects of CNS depressants or paralytics, as well as severe electrolyte, acid base, or endocrine disturbances, and achieving normothermia and a systolic blood pressure greater than 100. The brain death clinical exam is a bedside neurological evaluation to assess for coma and absence of brainstem function, including pupillary and corneal reflexes, eye movements, cough and gag, as well as absence of motor response to noxious stimuli. The apnea test evaluates the response of the respiratory centers in the medulla to increased levels of serum carbon dioxide and acidosis. Finally, ancillary tests, including cerebral angiography, HMPAO SPECT, EEG, and transcranial Dopplers can be performed if the clinical examination cannot be fully performed or if the apnea test cannot be completed due to hemodynamic instability. These tests evaluate the brain's electrical function and cerebral blood flow. Mr. Gomez is found to have irreversible coma resulting from anoxia, with temperature to 36.9 degrees Celsius, blood pressure 105 over 60, unremarkable BMP, ABG, and tox screen, and no CNS depressing drug effects. He does not respond to noxious stimuli and brainstem reflexes are absent. An apnea test was performed after which PaCO2 level is greater than 60. Mr. Gomez's partner asks you, what does this mean? How will you communicate your suspicion that the patient is brain dead to his family? The public does not understand brain death and the distinction between coma, a vegetative state, and brain death. It is important to communicate empathetically and to emphasize the severity and irreversibility of the patient's condition and your concern that the patient may meet criteria for brain death, which is legally equivalent to the heart and lungs not functioning. It should be noted that the purpose of the evaluation is to look for any sign of life. As with any family communication, the ask-tell-ask -ask framework can be useful to ensure understanding. In discussing end-of-life matters, it is often helpful to adopt the language the family uses around death and dying when appropriate. Support from a social worker, chaplain, palliative care specialist, or religious leader should be considered. When determining brain death, special considerations apply to children and patients undergoing treatments that might affect the results of apnea testing, such as ECMO or therapeutic hypothermia. Performance, reliability, and ethics of the brain death exam are discussed further in the course resources.